Strangers scattered around different parts of France and the UK find themselves vulnerable during the aftermath of an alien attack that wiped out the world's population. In the French Alps, Catherine, an astronomer, calls her sister Sophia to ask how she's doing. Sophia doesn't answer her call, so she leaves her a message. Later, Catherine gets in a van and heads to the observatory in the mountains. In London, a blind teenager, Emily, finishes getting her wrist tattoo. Back at the observatory, the satellites detect a signal from the area around the star Ross 128. Catherine asks her colleagues Johannes to check the signal's frequency, and he reads it at 153.26 GHz. He thinks maybe a satellite is in the path, but she confirms there aren't any. Then, Catherine asks Johannes to pull the signal the Arecibo Observatory detected near Ross 128b last year. After comparing the two signals, they determine they are identical, but the new one is much stronger. Johannes asks Catherine how she'd rate the signal on the Rio scale, a spectrum that quantifies the significance significance of evidence of extraterrestrial intelligence. She places this discovery at 6 or 7. Catherine instructs him to contact their colleagues through the Astronomer's Telegram and the ALMA, Atacama Large Millimeter Slash Submillimeter Array, for a second opinion. The next day, Emily wakes up when she hears pulsing sounds. In the observatory, Johannes tells Catherine that ALMA confirms the signal. She worries that they might be wrong about their suspicions, but he assures her that they aren't and to make the call. Catherine picks up the phone and relays their findings to the government. In London, Sarah, Emily's mother, sees her wrist tattoo. She tells her daughter they'll talk about it once her husband, Jonathan, comes home. Emily leaves for school, and her younger brother, Tom, enters the room and gives his father a call. In Northeast France, Jonathan answers Tom's call and asks how everyone is. In the Department of Neurobiology at the University College London, Bill is in the middle of a lecture. Meanwhile, Catherine arrives in Brussels to present their findings in front of European military and political leaders. She informs them that the signal was detected over 23 hours and 56 minutes, and she doesn't know its significance. She adds that she was part of an initiative that sent music into space. They ask her if this might be a response, and she says that if it is, it's in a language they don't understand. Stand. Afterward, a woman asks if the source of the signal might be a threat, and she says there is no evidence to suggest that they are, but the woman argues there is no evidence suggesting the contrary either. Then, a man asks the astronomer what they know so far. Catherine theorizes the signal's origin to be an exoplanet orbiting Ross 128 that may be able to support life. The crowd breaks out in concerned murmurs as Catherine leaves the stage. Later, Colonel Mokrani introduces himself to Catherine as her point of contact. In the university, Bill hears a machine beeping and wonders where it's coming from. He then watches a press conference announcing Catherine's discovery. In France and London, Jonathan, Sarah, and their children also tune in to their TVs. In a refugee camp, Karim reads a message on his friend's phone saying, 10 o'clock tonight. Back at the observatory, Mokrani's men set up their equipment. That evening in London, Bill watches his ex-wife Helen and her boyfriend Chris through the window from the street. When Bill arrives home, his son Dan is leaving for his government job. Meanwhile, in France, Jonathan flirts with a female colleague at the hotel bar who implies they retire to his room. In Sophia's apartment, she declines Catherine's call and takes medication before returning to bed. At a shipyard, Kareem and his friend sneak in. His friend gets caught, but he's able to escape by hiding in a metal tank. In the observatory, Saeed detects multiple objects approaching the Earth at 621 miles per second. In the hotel room, Jonathan and the woman kiss on the bed, but his guilt prods him to push her away. In London, Emily wakes from the same pulsing sounds. Back in the observatory, the objects have slowed down as they enter the Earth's atmosphere. Meanwhile, Sarah and Tom are frightened when the house starts shaking, and a bright light passes across the window. In the hotel room, Jonathan looks out the window and wonders if the bright lights are meteors. At the observatory, Saeed estimates the impact in seconds. On the street, Emily stands with her arms in front of her as the objects fly across the sky. Sarah runs out to grab her daughter, who asks her if she can feel the vibrations to too. Bill watches through the window in his apartment as the objects crash in the city. In the observatory, Saeed says several areas were hit. The next day, a news report confirms 2,500 objects landed on Earth and that London is in a state of emergency. In the UK command post, Rachel tells Dan to get the message out that people must stay indoors. He sees her children are there, and she reasons they'll be there until things calm down. Inside the metal tank, Kareem feels it moving, and he realizes it's been loaded onto a truck. The team in the observatory watches a video transmission from a crash site. The men detect normal radioactivity and no biological or chemical elements. A strong electromagnetic field comes from a spherical, non-porous 
this metal object. Catherine calls Sophia, who finally picks up and tells her to drive to the observatory. Meanwhile, Jonathan tells Sarah to head to her father's home and that he'll catch a train and meet them there. Later, Bill calls Helen to see if she's alright, and she tells him not to bother her anymore. In the observatory, Mokrani tells Catherine that four unknown substances have already been found on the objects, and their frequency and vibration with are increasing. He wonders how whoever sent the probes knew only to send them to inhabited areas. Catherine remembers the first signal from last year and thinks maybe that was when they scanned and mapped the Earth. Catherine then asks if the military can destroy the probes, but Mokrani pulls up pictures from Wyoming where bombs of an F-16 left no scratches. Moments later, Johannes tells Catherine he's leaving to be with his parents. In his office, Bill compares the electromagnetic field activity of the probe to the subretinal stimulation study results by a colleague and sees they are identical. In the command post, Dan answers Bill's call, who frantically explains the electromagnetic field from the probes affects the nerve cells and is designed to interfere with human neural functioning. The stronger the pulse, the more neurons fire, causing seizures and bodies to shut down completely. Bill asks Dan to inform the Prime Minister as soon as possible and to hide in anything encased in metal or deep underground. Shortly after, Dan tells Rachel what his father told him, but she already knows all about it. He says they need to warn people, but she doesn't want to risk panic. She walks away, and he sees her children safe inside the bunker. In London, Sarah and her children are stuck in traffic, and she sees police telling people to turn back. Emily hears the noise again, but her mother and brother don't. Meanwhile, Dan tweets a warning using the government's official account, advising all citizens to hide underground. In France, Jonathan pays a taxi driver to take him to the train station by any means possible. In the car, Tom sees strange light waves in the clouds. In the observatory, Catherine explains the electromagnetic field affects the atmosphere causing the phenomenon. Suddenly, a soldier tells them the British government warns of an attack. In the mountain pass, Sophia's car is stuck in traffic. In the car, Tom tells his mother and sister what the government tweeted. Then they hear gunshots from outside and wonder why the police are firing. In the metal tank, Kareem hears people screaming outside. Later, Catherine calls Sophia and tells her to search for an underground shelter. In Helen's apartment building, Bill encounters Chris on the stairs, who forbids him from seeing his ex-wife. The men tussle, and Bill accidentally shoves Chris down the steps, ending his life. Meanwhile, Sarah drives the car through a garage and back onto the street, but they're hit by another vehicle. She pulls her children out and tells them to head to the station. In Helen's apartment building, Bill drags Helen into the elevator even if she wants to look for Chris first. At the same time, Sarah and her children descend the steps in the station and join other people in the tunnel. In the observatory, a soldier informs Mokrani that all their planes have crashed. Suddenly, they hear a loud noise coming from above. Catherine calls Sophia, but they lose signal, and the call ends. The soldiers panic and Mokrani escorts Catherine to a metal bunker along with everyone else in the observatory. On the mountain pass, Sophia runs toward the observatory as the car alarms go off around her. In France, Jonathan's taxi drives into the river. All across the world, lights flicker until they go out, followed by a loud noise. Inside the metal tank, Kareem notices that it has gone quiet outside. In the train station, hundreds of people cower in the darkness. In the elevator, Bill and Helen wait silently before she yells Chris's name. While Jonathan struggles to escape the sinking vehicle, he kicks out the window and swims to the surface. He walks up to the street but is shocked to find every single other person dead. Elsewhere, Kareem exits the metal tank and looks at the car pile up behind him. The next day, Helen asks Bill if he used the stairs to get to their apartment, he should have seen Chris, but Bill continues to deny it. Afterward, Bill pries the elevator doors open and climbs out. He walks to the window and sees bodies on the sidewalk. Then, he heads to the stairwell and drags Chris' body to a different location. He returns to the elevator and helps Helen out of the carriage. In the observatory, Catherine wants to search for Sophia, but Mokrani forbids her from leaving. He urges her to wait for her sister inside. In the apartment, Bill takes Helen to Chris, and she cries over his body. The neighbor's dog is still alive and whining over its owner. Later, Sarah, Tom, and Emily leave the station and find dead bodies all over the street. Sarah leads her children to their car, but it won't start, so she tells them to grab their things from the trunk before they walk home. Alone in the car, Sarah cries for a few seconds and composes herself. In France, young men break a store window to get supplies. Moments later, Jonathan walks by, and one young man asks him if he's seen other survivors, but he hasn't. The young man says phones, radios, and the internet no longer work and hands Jonathan a bottle of water. He suggests Jonathan stay with them, but he declines because he plans to return to London through the Channel Tunnel in case things are better there. In the observatory, 
Tori, Mokrani tells Catherine the number of survivors is unknown, and there is no electricity above ground. The equipment his men secured still works and will run on a generator. Saheed is working on finding a working frequency on the radio but has yet to find anything so far. In the apartment, Helen asks Bill if he thinks their son is dead, and Bill believes he's safe in the bunker. Moments later, Helen packs a bag before she leaves to look for Dan, but she doesn't want Bill to come with her. He reminds her that Dan's also his son, and she asks what Bill is doing in her home. In London, Kareem happens upon a dead cop and takes his guns. In the apartment, Bill lays out supplies for Helen on the table, and she hands him Chris's sneakers. In the observatory, Catherine sneaks out through a back entrance. Meanwhile, Saheed finds an unknown working frequency, but all they hear is the pulsing sound. He tells the colonel that the signal is coming from the northeast direction. Mokrani asks the soldiers where the astronomer is. On the road, Catherine passes a car with a dead family inside and becomes more worried. In the apartment, Helen covers Chris's body with a blanket. Bill realizes the pulse didn't kill the dog and finds it interesting. They then head out to Dan's location. In another part of the city, Kareem breaks into a store and grabs food supplies. He doesn't notice the store owner behind him carrying a knife. When the owner asks him what he's doing, he says he's only there to get food. But the older man sees his gun and lunges toward him. Kareem accidentally shoots the man while he gets stabbed in the stomach. Minutes later, Tom is hungry, and Sarah says they'll find something to eat. Emily hears the sound again, but Sarah still doesn't. On the mountain pass, Catherine calls out for Sophia despite only seeing corpses around her. In the store, the family finds a mortally wounded Kareem on the floor. He asks them for help, so Tom runs out and calls a group of people passing by. He asks his mother why the people didn't help them, and she says it's because they're looking out for themselves, as they should. Inside, Emily hands Kareem a bottle of water and promises they'll get help. The injured man says he's losing a lot of blood. Sarah returns and asks her daughter if they can speak outside. Kareem tells Emily that her mother wants to leave him behind. Emily is appalled at her mother's plan and refuses to leave the man. Kareem begs Sarah to take him to a doctor, but Sarah pulls her daughter toward the door. Desperate, Kareem grabs Emily and puts his arm around her neck. He threatens to shoot her if Sarah doesn't get him a doctor. When Kareem sees the scared teen wet her pants, he feels terrible and lets her go. So Sarah and Emily run out of the store. In the woods by the road, Catherine meets Charlotte, a young girl separated from her parents. Charlotte says she's from Grenoble, so Catherine thinks they should go to town together. Suddenly, Mokrani and his men surprise them. He forbids Catherine from leaving in case another attack happens. The astronomer is adamant about going, so Mokrani concedes as long as they go together and she follows his orders. Later, Sarah takes her children to a hotel to spend the night. She finds an empty room and hands them food from the mini fridge. Back in the store, Kareem is gone, and all that's left are bloody paper towels. On the mountain pass overlooking the town, Saheed spots survivors going in and out of the supermarket, so the group decides to proceed there. At the park, Bill assures Helen that they'll find their son. Outside the supermarket, Mokrani orders his men to form a perimeter while he and Nathan follow a blood trail to the back of the building. The blood trail continues into the storage area, and the soldiers find a pile of dead bodies. Mokrani believes this may have been a trap. In front of the supermarket, the soldiers are shot at by unknown entities hiding on the roof. The soldiers fire back, but Saheed gets hit in the neck. Scared, Catherine and Charlotte run into the supermarket to hide. Mokrani and Nathan return to the front of the store after hearing the gunfire. Inside, Catherine and Charlotte don't see the quadrupedal creature behind them. Outside, Mokrani tells Saheed to apply pressure on his wound and asks the others where Catherine and the girl went. Inside, Catherine trips, and Charlotte runs away fearfully. The woman hears the creature about to turn the corner to attack her, but the soldiers shoot at it, and it runs the other way. Mokrani helps her up and asks where Charlotte is. The scared child hides inside a freezer on the other side of the supermarket. A few seconds later, she sees the creature's silhouette pass in front of the freezer. Suddenly, the top of the freezer slowly slides open. Catherine and the soldiers hear Charlotte scream and follow it to the back, where they find the lifeless body in the freezer. Mokrani tells her they must go, and Catherine cries about leaving the girl's body. In London, Kareem stumbles and falls on the street. Later, Catherine and the soldiers arrive at the observatory, and the men tend to Saheed's injuries. In London, an unknown man looks down at Kareem as he loses consciousness. That evening, Bill and Helen enter a house to spend the night. In the observatory, Mokrani informs Catherine that Saheed didn't make it. She apologizes for insisting on going to town, but he reminds her that he gave the order. She then feels remorse for failing to protect Charlotte. Afterward, she asks if he saw what it was that attacked them. 
He didn't, but it was as if they were waiting for them. In the hotel room, Emily and Tom are asleep while Sarah opens the window to smoke. She sees a woman running as a quadrupedal creature chases her. Subscribe to watch more videos like this. Turn on notifications. And leave a like it really helps the channel out. Thank you for watching.